Here's a stack of books from the library. Now sort them in alphabetical order. Computers have to do stuff like this all the time. It's a seemingly simple requirement that can be accomplished with dozens of different sorting algorithms, all of which have trade-offs, with no one optimal approach. Modern languages have built-in functions to do the heavy lifting for you, but you won't always have that luxury on a technical interview or when doing low-level systems programming. In today's video, we'll not only implement seven different sorting algorithms in code, but also see and hear them in action thanks to an amazing project called The Sound of Sorting. If you're preparing for a technical interview, these visualizations and audibleizations will absolutely change your life. Major props to Timo Bingman for releasing these videos under Creative Commons so we can use them in videos like this. I'm going to implement my algorithms in JavaScript and then benchmark them at the end. And you can find the source code on GitHub. But first, I want to check out an amazing product from our sponsor, JetBrains MPS. To the average developer, building a custom programming language sounds like an impossible challenge. However, with this open source IDE from JetBrains, anyone can build their own domain-specific language. Like MetaR, which is a highly specialized language for biomedical students who would otherwise have to learn how to program in R. JetBrains MPS is a logical editor as opposed to a text editor, allowing end users to interact with the code visually. This allows non-programmers to easily integrate their own domain logic, then MPS will generate the code for the underlying platform, like C, JavaScript, or any other language. That means anyone in the organization can harness the power of code in a safe, easy-to-learn environment, along with all the awesome tooling you would expect, like code completion, debuggers, and more. To get started, simply download it for free and give it a try. Now back to the program. The first algorithm algorithm will implement is bubble sort, which in my opinion is the easiest one to wrap your head around. It works by comparing adjacent elements, then swaps them if they're in the wrong order, which allows smaller elements to bubble to the top of the list. First, we'll set up a for loop for the length of the array, inside of which we'll nest another loop that loops over the array minus the current index. In this loop, we can do swapping by comparing the current index to the one next to it. If the left side is greater than the right side, then they'll need to trade places. The process continues until we go through the entire outer loop. And here's what it looks like like. <laughs> Bubble sort is intuitive, but not very performant. Its average time complexity is O of n squared, or quadratic time, which gets slower and slower as the list grows longer. This won't cut it in the real world. Another fairly easy option to implement is insertion sort, which builds up a sorted array one element at a time. Once again, we start with a loop, but this time we start at index 1, or the second value in the array. We then set up variables for the current value and previous index, and while the previous index is greater than the current value, we move the previous value to the right. Then we move to the left until we find a previous previous value that is smaller, at which point we can insert the current element. Here's what it looks like in action. <laughs> Once again, we have a nested loop here, which results in quadratic time complexity, but in practice it can still be pretty fast if the input data is already mostly sorted. Another similar approach is selection sort. It works by finding the smallest element in the array and exchanges it with the element at the beginning, then repeats this process until it's fully sorted. Once again, we loop over the entire array and then add a nested loop inside of it, but this time we're looking for the minimum value in the subarray in this nested loop. If the minimum value doesn't equal the current value, then we swap them out, which will effectively put the smallest element element in the proper position, then repeat that process across the entire array. Let's check it out. and merge sort also results in quadratic time. Next up, we have merge sort, which is a divide and conquer algorithm that's been around since the 1940s. The idea is to break the main array into subarrays, sort them, and then merge them back together. Unlike the other examples we've looked at, this one is implemented recursively. First, the recursive function finds the midpoint of the array. Then we have a base case here that will stop the loop when the array length is less than two. We then break the array in half at the midpoint using splice, and then we call the same function on both halves. But in order for that to work, we'll also need to implement a merge function that does the actual sorting. It loops over both arrays simultaneously, compares their values, and adds them in order to a new array. Then finally, it merges everything back together. Here's how it looks. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
it's a bit more complex to implement, but performs much better at quasi-linear time. That's why a variation of merge sort is the algorithm implemented under the hood for array sort in JavaScript, as well as many other languages and applications. One drawback, though, is that it doesn't sort in place and requires extra memory. If that's a problem, a similar alternative option is quicksort. It's also a divide-and-conquer algorithm that uses a pivot element to create subarrays that are sorted recursively. With quicksort, the array isn't necessarily split in half and works with any ratio. To sort the array in place, we'll first create a function called partition. Its job is to divide the array into two parts to separate the elements smaller than the pivot from the values greater than the pivot. In this case, the pivot value is set to the element at the right index of the array. From there, we loop over the portion of the array between the left and right values. If a value is less than the pivot value, then we swap it with the element at the partition index. From there, we can create a recursive function called quicksort to divide and conquer both the left and right side of the array. This is the more proper way to implement quicksort, but we can illustrate the concept a little better by cheating. In this more simplified function, notice how I'm first determining a pivot point on the array, then we divide and conquer by filtering out items that are less than the pivot on the left side and items that are more than the pivot on the right side. Now call that recursively to sort the entire array. That works, but it won't perform as well as the previous implementation. In any case, let's go ahead and watch it on TV. <laughs> Next up, we have Radix sort, which was created all the way back in the 1800s for tabulating machines. It's still used today on values like integers or binary strings because it takes a unique approach where it groups items that share the same significant position or place value. The implementation is a bit more complex, but basically it works like this. It splits the elements of the array into 10 buckets, one for each digit, 0 through 9. It then loops over those buckets and has a nested loop for the array itself. Get digit will then find the number at that place, going from 0 to 9, which provides a bunch of of sorted buckets that are combined back into the original array. What's interesting here is that there's no direct comparison going on. We're only looking at the underlying digits. This implementation is called LSD, or least significant digit, but it's also possible to work in the other direction with most significant digit. That's pretty cool. Let's check it out. <laughs> And finally, I saved the worst for last, Bogo Sort, also known as Stupid Sort. This would be like if you had a deck of cards and kept shuffling them over and over again and just hope that one time they're in perfect order. It's totally random. To implement it, I have a helper function called Shuffle that takes the array and randomizes all the elements with the math random function. Then I have another helper function that loops over the array to determine if it's sorted or not. Then we simply put those two together in a while loop until we get a sorted array. Not surprisingly, it looks pretty wonky. To finish things up, I made a quick benchmark just to test these implementations, and here's how everything played out. Bubble sort and cocktail shaker sort were near the bottom, while heap, shell, and quick sort were near the top. But it really depends on what you're sorting. This graphic from TopTal illustrates how different types of input data change the performance characteristics of these algorithms. A 10x engineer needs to understand the trade-offs and implement the optimal algorithm. Luckily for most of us, we can get by with array sort, so basically everything you learn in this video is completely useless on a practical level. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.